the uh, of the ketone functional group. Sorry. functional group for ketone, and we have functional group for amide when we have nitrogen or CN single bond attached to CO double bond. We have a ester functional group. Carboxylic acid functional group is for five. And there's one more here. So aldehyde functional group, which you have for CO double one attached to hydrogen in one side and carbon on the other side. The um, hydrocarbons, they can be anything that is carbon and hydrogen is classified as hydrocarbon. So you could have alkane, which are hydrocarbons with no double bond is all single bond. The hybridization of the carbon for all carbons in alkane is sp3 um, hybrid, and the expected bond angle is 109.5. Uh, An example of alkane is like propane, example of alkane. Carbon is tetravalent, is attached to four other um, center or nuclei. So if three of them is attached to uh, hydrogen and one attached to carbon, that satisfies the four carbon for the, the beginning of the chain. In the middle of the chain, you have two carbon, CH2, we, I'm sorry, uh, two carbon bond and the two hydrogen bond that uh, is going to give you CH2. So start for a uh, open chain alkane, start with CH3, ends with CH3 and in between, um, whatever number of the carbon carbon bond is shown, and if it's not shown bond is understood to be um, hydrogen. Like in this example, it already shows how many bonds you have. So it's a tetravalent um, and all single bonds or all sigma bonds or only sigma bonds, that's for alkene. Alkene, you have at least one carbon carbon double bond and when there is a carbon-carbon double bond, the number of hydrogens that it's needed for this, uh, for the carbon carrying the double bond is going to be lowered. Because if you have a carbon-carbon double bond here and you have two other bonds, if they are attached to other uh, carbon or hydrogen, um, so you are going to have less need for number of the, the hydrogen to reach the four bonds. So you don't need to add another hydrogen here. Basically, you have two bonds, two sigma bonds, or two single bond and one double bond. It satisfies the four bonds. And you have an example of the propene. When you have a CC double bond, the carbon here in the center, it has two, uh, two bonds attached to carbon one, carbon one, two, and three. So two bonds to carbon one, one bond to carbon three, that satisfies three and you only need one hydrogen. That's why you have a CH whenever a carbon carries a, a double bond, the number of hydrogen, it doesn't have to be again, um, CH2 or two hydrogens. The uh, aromatics, aromatics are compounds that they basically contain like a benzene ring or, or like that. Uh, we don't cover aromatic compounds. It, uh, organic one, we covered them in organic two, but at the same time, we want to uh, make sure that you have the, um, you know, the example of it, how it looks like when you have aromatic, is a conjugated uh, system. What does conjugated system means? In a conjugated system, is a cyclic conjugated system. That's like a, a characteristic for aromatic compounds. Cyc cyclic means that you have a, a closed uh, cyclic system and uh, a closed uh, system. So you have versus like open chain when you start with this like a CH3 and you end up with a CH3. Every carbon is at, attached to at least to two other carbon in a cyclic system. And uh, conjugated means that you have a single bond followed by double bond Followed by single bond, it alternates. You have a single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. And then you have a single bond, double bond. So it does conjugate. 
and that is a conjugated system. So it's like continuously uh, alternating between the single and double bond. If you have a compound like this, even though you have is a cyclic system with two pi bonds in it or two double bond in the cyclic system, but since it's not conjugated, it's not aromatic. Why is not conjugated? Because you have a single bond followed by another single bond. So this is not, this side is not conjugated. The same thing up here is not conjugated. Conjugated means single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. So that's an example of an ethyl benzene. So you have the benzene ring and any alkyl group that could be, uh, could be attached to it. Any questions? Questions? No, Professor, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the, uh, when we talk about the alkane, examples of the alkane, um, or the first number of alkane uh, starts with methane. So methane is one carbon and we need like four bonds for carbon. I'm sorry, carbon. So that requires like four hydrogen. We have CH4. Ethane is two carbon. The, the carbons needs to be bonded together. So you cannot not have like isolated carbon in one compound. So your carbon, you get the carbon bonds. So you have a carbon-carbon bond that satisfies one of the bonds for each of the carbons. And that is going to... Um, to make the, the number of hydrogens less than double this. So if you have like four hydrogen needed for one carbon, when you have two carbon, you don't need eight hydrogen. So if you look at this pattern, the number of hydrogen compared to the number of the carbon is always a N, uh, CN, and the number of hydrogen is a 2N plus uh, two. So for three carbon, if you have a three carbon, that number is going to be uh, two times three. That's n, two n plus two. And that's going to make it like uh, eight hydrogen needed for three carbon. So you have C3H8. And since we don't have the C7 here, so if you have less like a C, um, just gonna put the C4 here with, four times two is eight plus two, that's 10. And then C5 is 12. C6 is going to be, um, what would be C6? How many hydrogens do you need for six carbon if it's alkane? So the condition is for this molecule to be alkane or if the molecule, the molecular formula for a compound follows this rule, then we can say that compound is alkane because it follows the general formula for alkane CNH2N plus Two. So if you have six high, uh, carbon, the number of hydrogen is going to be uh, 14. So there's some of the examples. We, we talked about intermolecular forces in chapter two. Alkane, they are nonpolar compound, basically. What makes the alkane nonpolar is that these compounds, they have only carbon and hydrogen. The difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is very, very low. As a result, the, the, the molecule is nonpolar. If alkanes are nonpolar, the only type of intermolecular force you have is the um, Van der Waals forces. And for the Van der Waals forces, um, the, the greater the mass, the, the stronger the Van der Waals forces is going to be. So we could see the trend, the boiling point is increasing as the number of carbon is increasing in the compound. So for CH4, boiling point is minus uh, 160. But as you increase the number of carbon, the boiling point is increasing. Just pay attention to this negative value. So minus 89 is much greater than minus 160 in terms of the value or the, the intensity of the heat and it would go up as the molar mass increases. Uh, other examples, and we are going to look at this like branched molecules, is that uh, the, and these are common name for it, is not IUPAC name. Uh, for the common name, if you have a methyl group 
on carbon number two, the term iso can be used. So you have a methyl group on carbon number two. So if you just say one, two, three here, have a methyl group on carbon number two, and total number of carbon is four. So that makes it isobutane. What does isobutane means? It means that you have in total you have four carbon because but stands for four, and we do have a table uh, that shows the number. Uh, so and it's coming up soon. So you have but, that means four carbon. When it says isobutane, that means one methyl group is attached to carbon number two. So you have isobutane. So for pentane, you have four different isomers, uh, at least. So you have uh, normal pentane, that's one. Normal pentane starts with the CH3, ends with CH3, and you have three CH2 in between. Then you have isopentane. The total number of carbon for this molecule is five, and you have a methyl group as a branch on carbon number two, so that makes it isopentane. And then you have the new pentane, and why did they call it new at that time? This was new structure. It was newly found, and since it was newly found, they just said new pentane. They knew that there are four, five carbon in this molecule. The molecular formula follows alkane, so it is a pentane. But since they had two other pentane, they named this as new pentane. So if you have four carbon, you only have two isomers. So you have butane and isobutane. For five carbon, you have one, two, three isomers. And then if it's six carbon, the number of isomers is going to um, increase to much higher uh, number. So to draw the isomers for, um, to draw the number of isomers for six carbon, you can try it with um, all six carbon in a row. You have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbon. You take you you are you, that's one isomer number one and two you can draw five of them straight. That's two. Take one of the carbon, put it in carbon number two. Your isomer number three. Let's say you have one, two, three, four, uh, five, and then methyl group is on carbon number three, and you have one, two. Three. So if I place it on this carbon, it's going to count from the right side, carbon number two. So it's going to be the same as isomer two. I'm not going to write and repeat the same structure. Uh, but uh, you could have like uh, four carbon and then have two isomers, uh, two, uh, two branches, four carbon in a straight carbon chain, and you have two isomers. If both of them are, one is on carbon number two and the other one is on carbon number three. So that gives you uh, isomer number four. Then you could have four carbon and uh, two of them would be on same carbon. So these are, both of them are on carbon number two. And that gives you, again, different structure. So you have like five different, uh, different isomers. Can you think of another? arrangement that the connectivity of the carbon is kind of different or if you number it is going to be name it you're going to get like a different name for it so compound one is going to be like an n hexane or hexane normal hexane or hexane uh, compound two you have a methyl group because it's just one carbon and that gives you methyl functional group Methyl on carbon number two, that's one, two, three, four, five. You will learn soon about the IEPAC rules. Um, you number from the side that is closer to the branch. So you have a methyl group on carbon number two, and you can say two, that shows the location for the branch. And then the name of the branch is methyl. Use a dash line to separate the number from the letter. And then you have five carbon, so it's going to be pentane. Five carbon, all single bonded. There is no visible double bond, so it's going to be A and E uh, ending. Alkane, so it's a pentane. It's a two-methyl pentane. 
You don't have to separate the two leather from each other. So you have methyl pentane. You just write methyl pentane. But if you have two numbers, you can you have to separate by comma. So in this case, if it's one, two, three, and four, uh, we have methyl group on carbon number two and a methyl group on carbon number two, then you have to say like a two comma two, and then separate by a dash line. And that would be dimethyl. Because if it's just one methyl, you say methyl, two methyl pentane. But if you have two of them, you, you have two choice to say two methyl and then two methyl or say two, two dimethyl. That means you have two methyl group and both of them are on carbon number two, two, two dimethyl. And since it's four carbon butane, all in one line. A and E at the end, okay, butane. Uh, for this uh, compound, compound number three, the naming is very similar to carbon number, uh, to the compound two. What's the difference? What's the only difference? It's in the third uh, row. Is in the third position. Thir three. Yes. The carbon number three takes the methyl group, three uh, methyl, and then is pentane, right? Pentane. And name for compound four? Be, How is it different from compound five? It'll be two, three, methyl. So you have two, comma, three, dash. Because it's two metal group, we have to combine, combine them and we use di, tri for when you are combining like terms. So if it's like mono, you don't have to say mono metal. But if you have two metal group, you would say dimethyl. But you have to give the location also, position number two and three, dimethyl. And butane. So if you increase the number of carbon from a five carbon to six carbon, you have added like two additional isomers. Now, if you have uh, seven carbon, then it's going to be more number of isomers because the possibility of rearranging and kind of different connectivity is going to, to increase. So if they were if they were going with like a you know uh, pentane, isopentane, new pentane, and then the next one they cannot find a name. Um, so they said, okay, if it goes out of control and we don't have a new name each time, let's use numerical value. And that is the time that they actually came up with the IUPAC rule. What is IUPAC? IUPAC, it's the International Union. So you have the I, um, just make sure that I'm not, okay. Butane, isobutane, we talked about the isobutane, isopentane, neopentane, and uh, IUPAC. You have International Union of, the, um, of Pure and Applied Chemistry. These are the people who, like, who are chemists with like big hats. They sit and they, make, they have meetings uh, at least once or twice a year. They have a meeting just for approving names. So names are suggested to them for any, any newly discovered or synthesized compound. And they are the one who, who actually um, approve it. Is a, is a union, is a name of the union. So they came up with the, with the rules how to name the compounds, how to name organic molecules, because you have so many organic molecules um, and I think we I did, if I didn't say it before, I say it now, like comparing to like 800 to 900 inorganic compounds that is coming from every element in the periodic table. Uh, when it comes to organic molecules, organic molecules, um, the major one element or the, is carbon. And um, all these compounds, they are compounds of carbon. And you could have like a 12 million compounds already that there are that many or maybe more. Uh, today and each one they have to have a name and when you saw like those six carbon and uh, 14 hydrogen gave you like five different isomers they have to be named differently because no two chemical can have two same name uh, and if it has same name it has to be same compound so if it's two different compounds 
what do you mean by what do I mean by different compounds that they have different physical property or chemical property? When there is a point of difference, even one point of uh, point of one uh, physical property or chemical property, they have to be named differently. So position of the methyl group going from carbon two to carbon three, that's a completely new compound. Those two compounds are going to have different melting point, different boiling point, different solubility. So it has to be named, uh, named differently. If the two compounds, you name it and it's exact same, that must be same compound. They must be same compound. Example of that, let's say if I draw this structure here and I put a methyl group and this carbon and I put another compound uh, with the methyl group here. So if I, if I name this compound, I have to number based on the IAPAC rule. I have to number this from the right to left because it has to be numbered from the side closer to the branch. So this is a two methyl butane. And this compound I have to number from left to right because it's closer to the branch. And that is the rule. I cannot avoid that. Uh, the name is going to be is going to be two methyl butane, and if it's a two methyl butane, both for both of them, these two compounds are the same, same compound, because the name is the same. So but, you always want to start from the the shorter end, then work your way. Okay. Yes, closer to the branch. Yes, closer to the branch. Okay. So when you are naming, you are using the 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 suffix here for the naming for alkane is like A and E. Base, it says how many carbon you have. So when you say butane, that's but stands for four. And then A and E stands for, this is alkane. And then prefix, it's like what is attached to the main carbon chain. So the base and the suffix represents the main carbon chain, what I have in the box here. That's but for carbon. And then A and E, butane. And A and E stands for uh, alkane. And what is not represented here yet is that what is attached to the main carbon chain, the two metal, which two shows the location and methyl is the nature of the branch attached to this main carbon chain. So you, you are going to look for like branches first and you have to write the name of the branches first. Uh, you have to um, number the main carbon chain. And when you are numbering the main carbon chain, like how many carbon you have in the main carbon chain, it has to be consecutive carbon chain. Um, you cannot count like if I, if you follow me, um, this numbering, I'm going to use a different color for numbering. So if I use like this green color for numbering, if I say one, uh, two, three, and four, you see, when I'm writing one, I just slide the marker to put two and three and four. But if I want to bring this as, a, as the, uh, the number, as the main carbon chain, I have to lift the marker and come because there is no connection between carbon four and this branch. There is no connection between carbon one and this branch here. So there is no, and if I go from two down here to, I can, I, then I'm going to stop at three and it doesn't give me the longest car possible carbon chain. So I have to go straight for the longest carbon chain. And I have to number it from the side that is closer to the, um, to the branch. Okay, let's look at some other examples here. And the rules. Okay, this uh, kind of acronym is, is just helping you to, to memorize the first four uh, base name, which shows that represents the number of the carbon. MET stands for uh, one carbon, ET for two carbon, PROP, Prop for three carbon and beautiful uh, four carbon, like Mary ate peanut butter. This is just because it's beginning of the organic uh, nomenclature trying to be, you know, use shortcuts. Uh, so met for one carbon, 
et for two carbon. And you notice that for all of them, the family name is A and E because we are talking about alkane. Prop for three carbon and ut, hex, hept, oct, non, deck, and undeck, and dodeck, and that's it. You don't have to memorize anything else. So this is enough for you. Okay. So this shows the um, number of carbon met at prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and um, deck. And on deck and uh, do deck, that, that is for 11 and, and uh, 12. Professor, isn't another name for non carbon cyclohexyl? Or cyclohexane? Cyclohexane? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when we talk about the cycloalkane, then we just have to, uh, to deal with the cycloalkane. Let's say uh, cycloalkane, if you have, it's coming up quickly, but if you have like a three carbon here, so if it's three carbon, we are going to go with the prop, right? Correct. But since it's a cyclo, we have to say cyclo first. So cyclo, uh, prop, and then what would be the suffix? Uh, because there is no double bond here, it's going to be A and E. So we have cyclopropane. Same thing for cyclohexane. If you have cyclohexane, that means that the there are six carbon in a cyclic system. All bonds are, are single bond. There is no double bond. And that's uh, that the name of this is going to be cyclo and hexane. If there is no branch on it, it's just cyclohexane. Yeah, so if it's if it's enclosed, it's, it has to be cyclo. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Which we haven't talked about the cyclo, but you can, uh, you know, early, it doesn't matter. It's better for you. Okay, so we talked about these already. Um, tell me if you have any questions about those prefixes. Questions? No? Okay, IUPAC rules. We have to find the longest continuous carbon chain. And we have to number them. That's the step two. When we are numbering, we number from the side that is closest to the substitute, to the, to the branches. If you have more than one branch, then you have to look for the, the combination of the number. So the number set has to be smallest if you have more than one branch. If it's one branch, it's clear. If it's two or three or more than two, one branch, then you have to look for the, uh, look for the, the number set, which one gives you the closest or smallest number set. Any questions about these three rules? So you, have, I'm okay. sorry, can, can you give an example on rule three? Because you said um, yes, there's yes. two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, there would be example. I'm just okay, trying to go over the rules first. Thank you. Okay, sure. If you have um, if you have one branch, you just write the name of the branch and then move on um, to the to the base and then the, the suffix, which is the family name. If you have more than one, one branch and one type of branch, let's say you have one methyl group and then you have an ethyl group or you have an ethyl group and a propyl group, and you have to write the branches. When you're writing the branches, you have to write the branches in alphabetic order. But the first thing comes first. First, you have to find the longest carbon chain. Second, you have to number the longest carbon chain. Then you can assign location to each of the, uh, each of the branches. Okay. So in this case, this is a solved problem. Okay. Uh, but I can do a different uh, different problem for you, but I'm going to go over the solve problem first. Uh, should I start from this location? What would be wrong if I start from here? If I start from here, say one, two, three, four, and five, I get five carbon only. OK, 
okay? Five carbon, but if I start from here, like the solve problem is showing one, two, three, four, five, and six, then I have six carbon. So comparing the five carbon to the six possible carbon, six takes the priority. And since I packed the first rule, it says longest continuous carbon chain, I have to go from the, the carbon one up here and then go down, go, go to the right. So we don't even count the other carbon. We, we are not counting this carbon as the main carbon chain. You have main carbon chain, and when the main carbon chain, chain is numbered, it has to be continuous. Anything that is not numbered is going to be named as a branch. Now, we do have a methyl group that is attached to carbon number three. And this is not a complex. We do have a lot of examples that shows you more complex. Mm -hmm. But in this case, methyl group is attached to carbon number three, is not part of the main carbon chain. So uh, to name this compound, first of all, I will find the longest carbon chain. I number from this side, because if I did number from, uh, from the other side, if I had numbered it from this side, one, two, three, four, five, and six, even though, I get six carbon, but the branch, which is this, is going to be on carbon number four. And comparing to branch on carbon three or branch on carbon four, uh, which one takes the priority? It's the, it's the one, the lowest number should be assigned. That's the rule number two. So lowest number should be assigned. So this is going to be incorrect. So I have to number from the side that is closest to the branch. So I just have to figure out which side should you uh, start numbering. Okay. For this example, where you have, uh, you have two, possible long carbon chain. Let's look at the long carbon chain and we have to uh, number it. So if I go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, which side, okay, if I, if I take this as the, as the longest carbon chain, I have three branches attached to it. This side, it gives me seven carbon, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and one, two, three, four branches. Greater number of branches is priority. So if you have, these are still some rules for you to know, and please take notes, please write down your notes. It's, it kind of adds up. And then when I mean, you have all the rules, then we, you, know, you get the, the examples. Now, where should I start? What should I, what should I do? Now, we know that this is not correct because you get three branches versus the four branches. But let's name this compound before we move to the next slide. How do we name this compound now, this compound? What is the, we already know that we have seven carbon in the longest carbon chain. Um, I have two choices to go from one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's one choice. The other choice would be, I, write, I like to, at the beginning, to write down and then see what's happening. One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if I have the blue color, if I have the blue color, I have a branch in carbon number two. Then I have a branch in carbon number three. I have a branch in carbon number four. And I have a branch in carbon number five. I, I, do, I don't give the names yet, okay? But I know that I have one branch on each of those four carbons. Do you see the branch on each of those four carbons? Yes? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So if I go from the red route to number the seven carbon, I have a branch in carbon number three. Then I have a branch in carbon number four. I have five. And then I have six. Which one is going to be correct? The blue set or the red set? 
And what's the priority? The priority is to number from the side that it gives you the lowest number set. So basically, if you add two plus three plus four plus five, and you add here three plus four plus five plus six, you will have to see which one comes up smaller value. Which one? Will be the blue one. The blue one. So the blue one, so this is going to be wrong. So we had like two steps already that we denied, right? We denied this because it has only three branch. This one has four branch. We denied the red color numbering because it gives us a number set that adds up to seven plus six, that's 13, that's 18. And this one is five, 10, 14. So uh, this gives smaller number set. So we are going to number, use the blue color. Now, how do we name it? We have a uh, methyl group on car carbon number two. So I have a two methyl. just taking time to, to name it all that, and then I combine it. Then I have a uh, uh, three ethyl. I haven't combined it, this is not name. I'm just identifying what are the branches. So how do I know this is a methyl? Because it, it, it comes from methane, because it's one carbon branch, but has lost one hydrogen, so it's a methane. And this one is coming from Et, etane, two carbon, etane, but when it's as a branch uh, with losing one hydrogen, it becomes like a ethyl. So etane is a CH3, CH3, this is etane. That's two carbon and six hydrogen, that's etane. But if you have like a CH3, if it changes to CH3, CH2, basically has a free hand here, this carbon is not satisfied because has only one bond to carbon and two bond to hydrogen that has only three bonds, is missing one bond, is, is ready to attach to something else so it can act as a, um, as a branch. So ethane changes to ethyl. So when it loses hydrogen, it becomes ill. So you get that branch name as an ill, ethyl, two carbon branch. Methane becomes like methyl. Now this is a uh, methyl on carbon number four. So I have the name here, four methyl. And then on carbon um, five, which is this carbon and the, using the blue color, I have also a five methyl. Okay, so I have two methyl, three ethyl, four methyl and five methyl. When I have all those, now I have to combine it and give a name to this compound, okay? What should I write first? Which one should come in first? And can I combine the branches? Do I have any like branches that I can combine? You have three like branches. I have three like branches. So I, I use the numbers. I, I separate the numbers by comma. Perfect, perfect, very good. Uh, for your responses in the chat also. So I have like a two comma. Um, okay, which one should I write first, methyl or ethyl? Methyl. Methyl. I have to write uh, uh, alphabetic order. When it's alphabetic order, so, so you're basically comparing E to M, which one it takes the priority is the ethyl group here because you have the, you know, E comes before M in alphabetic order. So I have to write the ethyl uh, first. So it's going to be three dash ethyl dash because I have the letter and I'm going to follow by number. I have to use dash. So it's going to be three ethyl. And then you said what? Two comma four comma five. And then I use dash because I'm separating the number from a letter, tri methyl. And how many carbons I had in total in the main carbon chain? What should I say? Seven carbon, what would be the name? Heptane. Perfect. Heptane. Hep, hept for seven. And then A-N-E because it's 
alkane. So this kind of covers a lot of uh, a lot of rules and is an example where you are combining the like branches. You just combine the 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 uh, numbers, separate the numbers by comma, and then if you have three of them, use tri, and then just one of these metals. So you have two, four, five tri metal um, heptane, and then uh, you have an ethyl group attached in the carbon number three. Uh, alphabetic order, ethyl comes before uh, before metal. So if you have trimethyl, okay, someone could say, okay, but T comes after, you know, so in this case, it still is the same. But just make sure that you do not count the T for the alphabetic order, even though in this case it would not change, but you don't count the the uh, mono, di, or tri. The only prefix for combination uh, for the branch that you're, you're counting is the iso, which we haven't looked at it. So I counts, but the T or D does not count, or T for tetra doesn't count. So um, it's just the, the only prefix that counts for the branch is the iso when you are writing in alphabetic order. Only I from iso counts for the alphabetic order. Okay, the um, alkyl substitutions, we talked about the alkyl groups already. So if you have a methane, it changes to losing one hydrogen, gives you methyl, and you have to memorize the groups in this page. So you have methyl group, you have ethyl group, uh, propane, CH3, CH2, CH3, losing hydrogen changes to propyl group, and then you have butyl group. Um, you have a uh, butyl group, that first carbon, so you have a CH2 here, the hydrogen that is lost is from carbon one, so you have just, the, just a uh, butyl group, but if the hydrogen is lost from carbon number two, like this one, is a secondary carbon that is losing hydrogen, and this branch is called secbutyl, okay? So this is called secbutyl. There aren't many, so just memorize. There are like six or seven that you have to memorize and more, majority of them, they are in this, in this um, page. So you have the butyl and then you have secbutyl. You also have an isobutyl. Remember I said isobutyl, you have four carbon total and there's a methyl group on carbon number two. So isobutyl, just learn about this. You have to dry it a few times before you can you know, master. And then T-butyl, this is like a T-shape. So it's just like a T-shape that is attached from this, this carbon to the main carbon chain, whatever you have here. This looks like a T attached to it. And you have like a C, 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 and it's attached to a carbon. So you have four carbon in total is a butyl, but it looks like a T-shape or basically you can say that, or you could say is a tertiary. So this carbon is attached to three other carbon. So it's known as a tertiary carbon. A tertiary carbon is attached to main carbon chain. So you have T-butyl or third butyl. T-butyl also would be correct. I mean, you can say T-butyl instead of saying the third butyl. So you have a second butyl, T-butyl, and you have isobutyl and you have normal. Butyl, yes. Uh, is this a, um, an ordinary occurrence or this is like a rare thing we would find? Uh, it becomes very ordinary because um, yes, it becomes very, um, very okay. common. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not, but it's, you, get, you get used to it because there aren't more coming for branches, there aren't more coming. So it's limited number and you use it a lot. So it becomes kind of routine for you. Okay. Um, so you have a propyl group. There's another shape of this propyl where you have a uh, CH3 and then you have a CH, CH3, and then is attached from here, this carbon. So carbon number two from propyl has lost, has lost the hydrogen. So this is actually called isopropyl. So you, ha you have propyl group and you have an isopropyl group. You have methyl, just one, one shape. 
ethyl just one shape. For propyl, you have two, propyl and isopropyl. For butyl, you have uh, like four of them, propyl, uh, I'm sorry, butyl, isobutyl, secbutyl, and, um, and then um, t-butyl. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven that you have to um, memorize it because everything else, you just drop the, the A and E and add YL. So with the one carbon, methane changes to methyl. You drop the A and E and you add YL or you add il because it has lost the hydrogen. So it's kind of straightforward. The only ones that uh, you have to practice a couple of times before you can get it uh, for sure is like uh, it's iso, uh, sec, and T. And just this one, these four. It takes a couple of practices. Mm, methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl. Then you have butyl, isobutyl, secbutyl, t-butyl, and then pentyl, isopentyl, hexyl. These are very, just if you have a methyl group on carbon number two, it's going to give you iso prefix. So um, the ones that I showed you, though, those four, if you work on it, it's going to be good enough. Um, Okay, any questions about these two examples that we have down here? Basically, the methyl group is on carbon number two, so you number it from this side. Uh, there's only one branch, so you number it from the side that is closer to the branch. Because it's an ethyl and it's on carbon number three, it makes it three ethyl, and then total number on the carbon chain is uh, six, so it would be three ethyl hexane. Questions? Any questions so far? Any, any structure that you can think of for me to go over or no? Professor, if a branch is on the first carbon, is that still methyl? Um, okay, let's say uh, you have a uh, carbon, 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 and carbon, and then you write a branch here. Okay, so you had one, two, three, four, five carbon, but when you add a carbon to the to the a branch to carbon one, you basically increase the number of carbon in the car main carbon chain to six carbon, because the chain can be bent, it can bend down, can be bent, and uh, it can roll, but uh, it cannot be broken. Okay, so, so it has to be consecutive. Yes, we can't count from left to right then. In this case, either way. It's just, there's no branch here. There's no restriction. Awesome. So you can say from here, one, uh, two, three, four, five, uh, six, or you could say one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. As soon as you add a uh, methyl group here, uh -huh. then uh, this would be wrong, okay? This would be wrong. And you have to go with this side, one, two, three, four, five and six, because if you come from the up, down, up, down, and then to right, uh, this carbon would be, a methyl group is going to be on carbon number four. But if there is no branch, there is no restriction. Your question was a good question because it said, it, you show that, what about if it looks like, you know, uh, bent chain, then what should I do with this? Do I count this as a branch or do I count as a main carbon chain? Mm -hmm. The answer is this is not a branch because it's a continuous carbon chain. So this is part of the chain. Okay, all right. And a branch can go on the first carbon, right? Like in a No, first carbon doesn't take the branch unless, unless it's not a carbon. Let's say if you have a Cl here. Yeah, or a bromide, whatever. Perfect. So if you have a Cl right there, okay. then this is going to be one chlorohexane. Yeah, okay. Got it. Okay, which one should come in first? The 
ethyl group or methyl group should come in first. Based on the alphabetic order, ethyl E is before M, so ethyl should come in first. Should you number it from the right to left or left to right? If you number from right to left, it would be one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you number from the right to left, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number come number set is going to be five and three versus four and six. So just because four and six is higher than five and three, you, this is not right. You have to go this direction. But at the beginning, make sure you write. And when you're writing, you can use different colors. It's going to, uh, to help. So um, what should, what, what's the name for this uh, compound below, this example? How many carbon you have in the main carbon chain? Ten. Very good. Thank. You. Very good. Uh, should I number from right to yeah. left or left to right? Right to left. Right to left. Right to left. One. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. And then the name is going to be what would be the name? Two, five, seven, trimethyl. Two comma, five, comma, seven, dash. Trimethyl. Decane. Trimethyl. Dec A and E. Decane. Very good. Any questions? So the substitution here, also it says that the alphabetic order, but not based on the complexity. In IEPAC, alphabetic order, is, it takes the priority. For common name, uh, which we are not using it, is, uh, is the uh, complexity. Questions. Now, if the if the name is given and you are trying to draw the structure, what should be your first step? Your first step should be to draw the the carbon. main carbon chain, right? Yeah, the parent chain. Carbon. Main carbon chain. So in this case, the main carbon chain is carbon. for the the other example is a. Decane. So if we are going to work on this one first. This octane. So you are going to draw eight carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbon. Second, number it. It doesn't matter from left to right or right to left. If the num name is given, it doesn't matter. Uh, one, two, three four, five, six, seven, and eight. Carbon number four, it takes isopropyl. Attach the branches on proper to the proper location. The proper location is going to be four. The structure for isopropyl, you need to know that is a CH, CH3, CH3. It looks like this, and this comes with practice. Oops. Um, next example would be decane. You, you have 10 carbon, so you would start from here. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Did I put too many? Two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay. And you number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight, nine, and 10. Carbon number five takes a branch. The, there's a tertiary carbon, three carbons 
three methyl group attached to this carbon. So you just have to know what's the, the structure for the T-butyl. Okay, question. Does it matter how you number it? Can you number from one on the right side and go to 10 to the left or it has yeah. to start from the left to right? Either way, uh, if, you're, if, you, if the name is given uh, and you haven't placed the branches, either way work, works. Either one would work. Okay. And then the name for this uh, compound, now you have to consider which way you have to start. You have to consider how many branches you will get. First of all, first priority is the highest carbon chain. Second priority is greatest number of branches. And then the next priority is numbering from which side it has to be smaller number set and then you identify your branches give location to the branch and then write the name for the uh, for the compound so you have in this case is going to be uh, one two three four five six seven eight what would happen if you numbered it differently if it was like one two three four five, six, seven, and eight. See, you would start with the branches on carbon number uh, three, five, and then seven, six and seven, rather than uh, two, two, three, five, three, six. So just, you have to be, you know, it's a good, simple math, but you have to pay attention. Which way should you go? And there's only one correct name for it. Okay? There's only one correct name um, that follows the IUPAC rule. So when you're following the IUPAC rule, you have to follow the IUPAC rule, even though if you write the wrong name and you were trying to determine the structure or draw the structure, um, you should come up with it, but that is not the correct name. If the structure is given, there's only one correct name for it. Uh, we talked about this before. Uh, for compound branching, lowers the intermolecular forces. If you remember from last class, I said if like this is just comparing the iso alkane with the normal alkane. The the greater the molar mass, the greater the boiling point. For normal alkane and for iso alkane, but every iso alkane it has a slightly lower boiling point compared to the normal. So if you have butane here, isobutane would be down here. If you have pentane, you have isopentane down. It still is five carbon, but the shape of the structure is going to also matter. And then there's another like very odd um, set that the uh, even number and odd number, even number have slightly higher uh, boiling point or melting point compared to the to the odd number. So it's just is just the observation. It's not going to make a huge difference, but you might get a question um, for the even number versus the uh, versus the odd number because the odd number melting point like how well is going to the molecules get stacked over one another, uh, how close they are they are forming a solid compound. When it's even number stackability. Is it has a better chance for a stack, proper stackability, and it gives like more organized solid, and it would be harder to break it down those forces to change it the, the solid to liquid. Questions. So you're saying odd numbers are harder to melt. Odd number of carbon. No, even number, even number. Oh. Yeah. So, and when you say even number, you don't compare like uh, eight carbon 
to like a five carbon. You're comparing like eight carbon to nine carbon or to like a seven carbon. So it's just saying that the, for, this is only for melting point and is not a, a huge difference. I mean, in that, uh, in the numbers. So it shouldn't be like a big deal, but still is an observation that when you have even number of carbons, um, the even number of carbon, they have better um, connections or attachment or electrostatic attraction that makes the melting point to be slightly higher, slightly higher. If you look at that graph again, the numbers are very close to one another, just a slightly higher. Okay, when we study one family of the organic molecules, we look at the structure, the general formula, like for alkane is like a CNH2N plus two, how to name these compounds, which is a big deal um, for, for organic um, chemistry, for you, for you to know chapter, chapter three. Chapter one and two is just a review from what you knew before. Um, some was covered in general chemistry, others may not have been covered, but it's just a review. Uh, when it comes to the, when it comes to the, uh, Chapter three is the beginning of the organic chemistry because first you need to know the, uh, the name for this compound before you talk about reactions and everything else. So, but since we have many families and we're studying organic chemistry family by family, for each family, you need to know how to name these compounds. You need to know the physical property, what type of intermolecular forces, how does the intermolecular force for this compound in this family is different from um, alcohol family. Like alcohol, they have an OH bond, but alkane doesn't have OH bond. So if you have two carbon alcohol versus two carbon alkane, obviously two carbon alkane is going to be much lower or weaker as intermolecular forces. Um, but at the same time, if you have a two carbon alkane versus four carbon alkane, four carbon alkane is going to have higher melting point, boiling point compared to two carbon alkane. Uh, so physical property structure, which we know that hybridization is a, is a sp3 hybrid uh, for alkane and naming the compound, the um, reactions of this compound and how to prepare these compounds. So, uh, we talked about the physical property. We talked about naming. We talked about. Uh, I'm not gonna get the monopoly. No, never mind. Never mind. Mm. Or, or should you get the game of life? Okay. So, uh, questions. Questions. Okay, as I promised, I am um, going to stop.